Hi foodies, this is Jenny here from Jenny's Walk and as promised a little while ago that I was going to share some of my knowledge and my skills with you for the words that I grew up with with granny using coming from a West Indian background. So in her cooking, you know, great granny never used much English, you know, they were Hindi. So I grew up with these words that she used. So let's start with some ingredients around the house. So salt, salt, the name is namak. Sugar was chini, chini. Oil, oil was tail, quickly, tail. Mustard oil was sanso tail. And you know, mustard oil is used for, edible mustard oil now is used for cooking and also for body massages. And we used to, back then we used mustard oil, was only used to preserve the, the kuchila and the mango and char and all of that. Pepper was michi. Haldi is turmeric, which we all know that yellow powder that you use for the dal. Piyagi was onion, is onion, sorry. Piyagi, onion. We had a uh, mar. How many of you know what is mar? Mar was the water from the rice. When you, rice is bat. And the bat, when you strain the bat, that water you will get there, that starchy water was mar. The name of it is mar. Because we never steam the rice. We boil the rice and strain it off. And how many of you remember saving that water from that, the mar and mixing it with regular water with some salt in it? And granny used to feed that to the cows and the goat and the sheep. She used to give them that to drink. She also had mar and rice with baji and with dahi. How many of you remember that? Uh, so rice is bad. So split peas, chana dal, or lentils is called dal. Like dal and bat, which is dal and rice. We have coriander. Coriander leaf, coriander powder. Coriander is danya. You have danya seed, which is a coriander seed. is one of those spices that we use to make the different types of curry powders. We have lasun. Lasun, which is garlic. And we all use our ginger garlic paste. Dalchani. Dalchani is cinnamon bark and you all know we use that cinnamon uh, stick as you also would use you would say to cook so many uh, savory and sweet dishes. Elaichi which is cardamom. You have green elaichi and black elaichi. We have ginger which is adarak. Ginger root adarak. And dahi. How many of you know dahi? Dahi which is also yogurt or curd. And that is made from the milk and you know that was something made at home and from the dahi you will make the ghee so granny had cows and a lot of you grew up i know i grew up in the rural area and most of the people had the cows and the goat and all of that so those are some of the words that granny would use in the kitchen in cooking in the cooking line you know where you will um as you would say puje puje the um no chunky sorry Chonke is where you will put the oil in the pot and add your puran, which is onion, pepper, garlic, curry leaf, uh, maybe cinnamon stick, two clove, some uh, cinnamon, and that cinnamon, um, uh, that little seed, cumin seeds. So that you will call chonke. So now let's move on some instrument that we use around the house. So we had the lorha and the sill, which is a big long piece or a slab of um, stone. And there was a wrong stone where she used to grind the stuff with but now we have the the mortar and pestle which is this this is the more this is a pestle which is the long part and the mortar is the bowl here where we will pound and this i will use and you get the same type of uh texture when you do your seasoning and your your um coconut choker and all of that even pound your choker bigan choker and all of that so this is that here we have a sapi. We all know what a sapi is. How many of you don't know? I know a lot of you may not know. My new foodies would not know. A sapi was a pot cloth, um, not a tea towel. An old pot cloth that Granny will fold and use to hold on both sides of the pot. Like she will hold the pot. Sometimes she will do it like this on both sides. Bring the sapi. Pick up the hot pot and put it here. Take it out from there and put it here. And most of the time, the sapi my Granny would use. My uncle's old jeans, she would cut the legs off and they make it into a short pants. It was very thick. So, you know, by rolling it together, her hand was protected from the heat because we had the fire side, which is called a chulha. A chulha is that fire pit that what you will make with clay 
and not mud but clay and she will mount it up really well with the, the chicken wire with three three stumps one two three like a triangle sometimes used to have a, a two burner chula she used to make my granny was very creative and after using it sometimes you know it used to break off a little bit how many of you know what is gobar now we had the cows the gobar was the stool from the cow the cow cow dung which was used as manure and it was also used when it dry like, it used to be like a patty cake it used to be like this big or even a little bigger than this size she used to light it and it used to send away the mosquito it was like a repellent also she used that gobar and mix it with clay and she used to uh, lipe lipe is another word meaning she would pass it all over and patch back that fireside or chulha and make it nice again and i remember one of my auntie i used to go for hol summer uh, summer holidays by her she lived deep into the country area and her floor was um that floor uh to lipe to lipe the floor she had the mud floor but she had an upstairs that was wooden you know two floor house but downstairs was a lipe on a sunny morning she will wake up early and she would leave it so it will dry really nicely let me know how many of you remember these days and i think there were huts too long ago this is so long ago that was made the walls was made from from the clay which i see other countries in my travels where it is made with bamboo inside and stuck on both sides or karat 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 roof and the walls were made with clay so you leap it and to leap it and have cement and stuff that is what they use i remember my auntie got a little bright my auntie had a mop that she used to mop to leap the floor you know instead of kneeling down it was a very very uh, strenuous work and uh, very tiring to leap it and you use your hand and you put it on the side and she said leap it and there was no gloves let me know how many of you remember those days my dear foodies so let's move on again so we have here things around in the kitchen this was called a chimtal this is called a tongue but it was called a chimtal some of you will say a simta well you know the words have changed but the, the, the hindi word is, is a chimta which is a tongue that granny will use in the fireside to sake the roti for it to swell big or push up the firewood if it's too small so you don't get burned or you move the coals around that is a chimta there's another one where you used to grip you hold it to grip i can't uh we don't i don't have one of that but i can't as i go along i, I will tell you about it i see it in a lot of, of cooking shows and whatever but i don't have i never used it i never used that so with that now as we go we had the pukni to blow the fire it was usually one of the, the water pipe it was small and long because you have to take a deep breath and just blow into the fire side to bring the heat up to get the flame all going there it was like this but a small hole because you have to really take a deep breath and blow into that so that's a pukni let me know how many of you remember that that pukni then they had a chani it's a tool with a tip on one side and then with a hammer on the other side how many of you remember seeing that it, you know we have a pick i remember the pick and we also had one with a pick there and on this side was a hammer how many of you remember that chani we all know what the tower is or the hot stone or the baking stone the tower that we throw the roti on to make and you had spoke about the chulha already now the firewood is a jalavana jalavana is the firewood where we had a piece of wood called a jataha a jataha was a big piece of wood it could be this or big maybe longer that my uncles used to use and watch the mango on the tree or whatever food hit it and all the fruits will fall on the floor it's a piece of wood dry wood green wood a branch from a tree it's called a jataha let me know how many of you remember that and we have the dabala which is this paddle <laughs> how many of you remember getting a good katas with this i do i got it a lot in my butt so this is used to flip the roti and you hold it around whether it be any roti you're making the the bus up shot you're going to beat it up the Dalpuri and you flip it with that then we have the cultural or the ladle you all know the cultural we use the cultural to chunk it out but now we have the tadka the tadka which is the same thing but it is flat so this way we don't feel like heat in our fingers to burn up our hands you know sometimes we used to bend this all different angle not to get burned but now we have the tadka and i've done a lot of cooking and i left the link where you can pick up your own so you can use it makes it very easy the cultural 
uh, that the, and is used to truncate the dal. And then here we have the dal goat knee. How many of you remember the dal goat knee to swizzle up the dal, make it creamy and nice? We also use this to make that lovely dish from the beautiful island of Trinidad and Tobago, Kalaloo or crab. So the Kalaloo, which is the dashing bush bhaji with the okra and all of that, we give it a good little swizzle like that and we use the dal goat knee. Now, how many of you remember this? This is those wire with spiral around. This is a swizzle stick. This was only used for sweet. Granny used to make our cup of milk. How many of you grew up with Frico, Klim, Milk, Milo, Horlicks, um, mm, Cocoa Tea and all of that? This was used, we only had whole milk, we didn't have instant milk. So she would put the warm water in there and the milk and she will swizzle it away. This is the swizzle stick. So all, there's no lump. When my auntie's making the punch, like the pumpkin punch, the carrot punch, peanut punch, sour sup, whatever, this was also used to break up the milk, the evaporated milk and the condensed milk in there. Good little swizzle. Let me know how many of you remember that. What about this guy? It's a long stick with some cotton fabric in the end, chipped really nicely. This is called a puchara. So the puchara was used to make the oil roti, whether it was a bus up shot, or paratha roti, oil roti, clapping roti, or the dalpuri, where she will dip the oil and then run it all around the roti. And then she's gonna use the tabla and flip it. This was also used in weddings. It'll be much longer because they're making the big towel roti. Let me know how many of you remember that. And talking about the roti, this is the, this is a miniature one. This is my granddaughter. I'm trying to instill the culture into her too. So I bought her a little. Um, oh, I'm forgetting now. Look at that. <laughs> we have here the bailna and chowki. Yes. This is a chowki, sometimes you have a little uh, foot in there, sometimes it was laminated at the top, and you're gonna put your lawyer, which is the dough, the flour that you need, and you're making the roti, that is uh, the, the, the lawyer, and you will sprinkle some flour, which you will say sprinkle some paratan. Paratan is that just regular all-purpose flour, and you're going to bale it, you're going to bale the roti with the bailna, then you're going to drop it on the tower. And then we use all those other instruments, depends what type of roti you're making. For all my young foodies, I don't know if you know these words, but these are words that we should keep in our culture to keep it going. So we had the dal goat knee, then we had the churan mali, which is ghee, ghee or the oil. Churan mali, ghee. Then we had the swizzle stick there, then we have the puchara. Okay, we went through that. Um, then we have pani. When well, talking about the pani, the pani is the water. So you had water, pani, garam pani, which is hot water, or tanga pani, which is cold water. Say, egg bottle tanga pani, bring me a bottle of cold water. That was a regular thing when they come from the cane land, they want their cold water to drink. So we have the chunky or saute, we have the, um, the big aluminum pots, you know, those big, big pots when you're cooking for the, for the family. Baguna, the big ones, like uh, this is an aluminum pot. The big ones, and you know what I'm talking about. Like when you're having big family coming over, we're having weddings or whatever, we have that big pot, when you big rice aluminum pot, baguni. Then the small one was a Tesla, a small aluminum pot. So this is a Tesla. Okay, my dear foodies, those are some Indian words there. Try to remember them. Then any pot, like a clay pot, any clay pot, we will call a kadaki. A clay pot, a kadaki. This is a black clay pot. And you know, I love pots and I have so many different types of kadaki. That's <laughs> my clay pot. And what else? We have the cover. I can't remember the, the cover for the pot. I should come across it for these. I have it here somewhere. I just, I just can't find it. So these are some lovely words here that I learned and I grew up with. Oh, pot cover, I got it now. Dakana, dakana is the pot cover. I don't want to forget that. So tool to move the hot, yeah, I was telling you about the other one like this where you would clip it, you will clip it and you will move it out, but it's not smooth like this. It really gives a good clip and it is called a sadzi. Sadzi, I see it in a lot of uh, cooking, like in Asian cooking, they will, Filipinos, they all use it. Then we have the scissors, with the, this is the kaichi, which is your scissors. We have the cham, 
Chamach. Chamach is an eating spoon. Chamach. Then we have the kata chamach, which is an eating spoon, a fork. And then we have the, um, have you ever seen a, like a grass knife, a half a circle, but it's a blade where maybe you have friends from Bengali or Pakistan or wherever, and they use the, the big toe and the second toe to hold it tight. And it's a half a circle come up to them and they will cut their vegetables and all of that just like so. Do you, have you all ever seen that? That's called a hasua. Hasua. That's a knife that they use like that. Mm, I don't want to cut with my toes. Then we have poya or gilpin machete. How many of you know that? Ask your uncle what is that. No, ask your dad. A machete or the poya we use to chop up the goat, cut up the duck, cut cane. It's, it's so many different uses we have and so many different designs we have also in that. Or gilpin. So the dakana is the pot cover. Then we have the strainer, the tea strainer or rice strainer. It's a chalansi, chalansi, whether it is this or the strainer to strain the rice, because you know, as I told you, we never steam the rice. I know a lot of uh, different islands, they steam the rice down. I grew up with granny boiling the rice, boiling the, the bath and strain it off the mar. And we have the flambeau. How many of you remember the flambeau where granny will take that, that cotton cloth, get a curry bottle, Fill it up with pitch oil or kerosene, make a wick like this and send the whole wick inside of the bottle and then bend the bottle down so the wick will get all wet and that was our flambeau. This was used in the nighttime. We had the lamps for inside the house but the, the flambeau was used like outside because we had an outside kitchen and an inside kitchen. The flambeau was used to go all around the place. How many of you remember that and growing up with that? Those are way back when. Let Leave me a comment and let me know how many of you remember those lamps, the hurricane lamp and all of that. So as we move on, my dear, my foodies, pirha. Pirha is a small little bench made to sit low on the floor to clean the fish, to chop the chicken, peel peas, or use it as a little stepping stone to, to get something up there higher. So we have a mataka. The mataka was that pitcher made from clay it's a clay pitcher and you know clay granny used to keep the water in her because it used to be cold we didn't have a refrigerator and i was a little girl then and you, she always fill it up and when you drink that water it's forever cold and we always use the enamel cup or this cup because that way it keep things cold it never run hot there's a temperature it will keep the cool water as you would see then we have jaru jaru which is the broom the word jaru and jare how many <laughs> it's so close right so jare you know what jare is jare is to say my goodness yeah malju what is malju is another word malju is where oh the baby get malju or jenny get malju the baby looking so big and fat and chubby nice cheek and all of that oh she's so pretty oh jenny looking so beautiful you go home, you have headache, you feel nausea, maybe you're too happy or something like that. Right away, Granny say, oh my gosh, she get malju. We had to jare her. So she jarring was really from the, the Hindu priest. He used to go by the pundit and he will use the broom or the pick up feathers and measure with the broom and jare you and whatever. So that is jaru from the broom. Jare is this broom sticky to. Then she, if before you go to him, that's when it gets bad, you go to him. She said, let me out show you first. So granny take a brown piece of paper, she break the flower bag, it come in brown paper. She will put onion skin, garlic skin, cut a bird pepper in seven pieces or get seven bird pepper, put it in there, some salt and I don't know, maybe some curry or whatever. And she will wrap that up and start jarring, going down from the right, all the way down to the body, right to the left back, that's one. Seven times. And then pass it between your foot and burn it in the fireside. If it burn your nose, you had bad jarry, you had bad malju. If it didn't burn up your nose, well, oh, it was maybe a flu, a flu bug or something you had in your stomach or whatever. So let me know how many of you remember the jarry. I still do a jarry when I'm ready. I don't know if it's a myth. I don't know if it's a fact. If it's mind over matter, you get better. So we have here the cow down, the gobar. I spoke to you about that. Then we have the puchara and all of those good stuff. So those are the childhood words that I grew up with, my dear foodies. I just want to use some everyday words that she used to use. Bite it, bite it. When she got neighbor, bite it, bite it. Come, come sit down. Come and sit down, bite it. Kahajala, where you going? Jenny, kahajala. 
Oh, I'm going to the supermarket. I'm going to the grocery store, whatever. Kiahua, what happened? You crying? Oh, you said Kiahua. And we all know that song, Kiahua, Te Avada, Bokasam. <laughs> so you finish the rest and let me know how many of you know this. Chalo, chalo, beta. Oh, chalo, beti. Chalo mean, let's go. Let's go. Chalo, chalo. Let's go. Beti, beta. When did you want to differentiate male and female? Beti, I'm a beti. I'm a girl. And um, the boy is beta. But yeah, Latki and Latka. Latki is the girlfriend and Latka is, is the, the boy, the boyfriend, right? Then you have Nahi. Then you have ha. Nahi means no, ha means yes. Then we have Jalahi Karo. Do quickly. Jahili Karo, hey? Do it quickly. You know, whatever you're doing. Then we have um, Mahajataho. But I'm not ready to Mahajataho. Mean by now, you know, I'm leaving. Mahajataho. Then we have um, Wahawi, mean Ulaha. Then we have Kana, which is food. Kana, which is any food, and we had a tick, the ticker or the bindi, a bindi, yeah, bindi or ticker right here, and then in the middle over here we had that red um, sindur. That sindur signifies that you are a married woman. It signifies in the village, you know, you don't heckle as you would say, or, or try to be smart with that woman. She's a married woman. She belongs to someone. But you know, uh, you would look out for a ring, or you would look out for that. But in nowadays, now this life we're living in, this century, this new generation, it do apply. You know, whether you have the ring on or the cinder in the head, it's still coming up in your face. So my dear foodies, let me know how many of you remember these words. And let me know what words you know you want to share with me and share with all our foodies here at Jenny's Walk. I am so happy I can show my skills and my knowledge with you. That is what we're here for. I always let you know. Jenny's Walk, we're here to learn, we're here to share, we're here to create. And this is the Hindi that I learned and grew up with from on my mother's side. My mother is Indian and my father is Chinese. And of course, my husband is Spanish. So I'll do some Spanish one for you in a good, in a good bit as we go. So now it's time for me to say Mahajataho. Time for me to say bye-bye. But before I say bye-bye, I have the, oh my goodness, I'm forgetting foodies. Here I have a cold pot that I wanna share with you. How could I forget this? Where is it? Here you go. You see that there foodies? This is the opening of the cold pot where the coal will fall off. And this is that beautiful cold pot. So who didn't have a rice cooker, um, who didn't have a, um, no, they, sometimes they had both. They had the fireside and the cold pot. And you put the coal in here and you could rest the pot in there on top of the coal and cook just like so. Or you could use this and rest the pot on here. Put the coals in there to light and you put it up and you could use a little pot here to cook. How many of you remember going up to the airport on Solomon Ho Choi Highway and they had these little huts as a little girl I remember very well. And we had to stop. Uncle, uncle, look, look, the corn lady. She had roast corn or boiled corn and the cold pot is what she used to make it with. Let me know how many of you remember those days. So that's some lovely childhood memories there. And I forgot to mention to you, my dear foodie, bartan. How many of you know, go wash the bartan. Make it sure you wash the bartan. What is bartan? Bartan was the dishes, all the dishes. And I told you I got some inheritance and this is my inheritance, yes. This is Granny's Wares and I got, Granny's Bartan, sorry, that I got. But this is mine, I just wanna share with you. You know, we had the stainless steel ones that we used to cook, serve different takari, takari, which is any side dish that you cook. Takari could be meat, fish, vegetable, aloo, fry aloo, curry aloo, baigan choka, edos choka, same, pigeon peas, whatever. So. Granny also used this cup to put over the dalpuri roti or that, and I did a lot of videos with that where you could see I did that, or the paratha roti. So how many of you remember these bowls? Well, this is a new bowl that I got. My, my cousin sent this new bowl up for me. He sent me the cup. How many of you remember these cups with and without the cover? Granny will make that tea first, as I said, and she will all the way up in the sky like this. How many of you remember she making that Milo tea for you and make it really bubbly and nice and serve in the cup? You got to be careful because the cup too was very hot. There you go. And we all had that basin. It's, it's all rusted up, but it's good. I had it sprayed so I could use them. They're very much usable. And the whole village, everybody in the village had the same dishes. 
Then we have the plates. All these plates here was our eating plate, our soup plate. I have a couple new ones too. So these are the old ones that we had. And this is some new ones I have here. And you all know what happened. Now, everybody in the village used to shop either with the same van coming to the village to sell or they go to the same uh, shopping district. And every house had the same bartan. This is a big flour basin. You're gonna use this to knead the flour to make it roti. And at the back of the basin and all the bartan, every family used to put their initial the last name initial. So granny had her initial in the back here. So when your uncle from over the road say, Jenny, what, what granny could bring some food for me. Granny would pack the food and she would cover it like this and say, go give this to your uncle over the road. So we will take it for uncle and he will eat, bring this back for granny and when this wash, they will send it. So when uncle family washing and they see granny initial, hey, that plate ring to granny, take it back. That's granny plate because it's a different letter. Everybody had their plate. So that is how we distinguish our Barton back then. Let me know how many of you remember those days and leave me a comment. And I'm going to be kneading my flour to make some roti in this barton. And the barton used to wash in the barton stand. My grandfather was very creative. He took the, the bonnet of the car, make the hole where the emblem used to be and put up some legs there. So it was like that. And then she had the pipe there and a big turtle bag to wash the rinse the barton clean and then wash it again. She used to use the loafer. You all know the loafer or the dry jingy. This was used to get a good shower with this or use it for here. And another thing foodies, how many of you remember that the dish liquid, that the laundry detergent and the, the Barton detergent was the same. Granny used Breeze. I remember everything was breezy clean. She used to use the Breeze and have it there in the sardine cup where she will touch and she will wash the bartan and manja them. And the, the ashes that was collected from the cold pot or the chulha, that was used to really give these pot a scrub. You know, they're black. So every pot bottom have to shine or else you ain't getting dinner tonight. And you have that used to shine it really good or you use the copra or that, that fiber from the coconut. And, but then as we get older, we start to use foil paper and then they had this um, this wire scrub that they used to sell to scrub the barton. We had that there to clean the barton. So foodies, a lot of uh, information here to share with you. I promise I will do this video for you. Let me know how many of you leave in the comment, know these words, grow up with these words, have more words to put in there for me to remember. We're here at Jelly's Walk to learn, share and create and um let me know what you know also like the pickles is achar uh kuchila achar mango achar a kuchila or achar is the words so you have either mango kuchila mango achar cherry kuchila cherry achar you know pump city achar pump city kuchila the difference with the kuchila is that it's grated the achar is where they slice in pieces it's either dry and put in the mustard oil or it's it's done like fresh with the takari not talcari takari the word was takari, which was any side dish, as I told you. You will enjoy mago takari or whatever takari we had. So lovely information here to share with you. Drop me a comment, share the video with your friends and family, and let me know what you learned from it and what you have to teach me, because I want to learn more too. So thank you for joining me from my kitchen to your kitchen. Happy cooking.